Well, right. we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of Foxtrot. Indeed, and, yes. yes. And um, I suppose my first question is, you're going on the road to play this album in its entirety. Yes. Um, what challenges musically do you think that might present? And have you broken the news to Nad Sylvan that he has to adorn a red frock and fox's head for the performance? Oh, indeed, yes. Well, we don't want him to be too literal as regards that. You know, um, I'm sure he would wear um, all manner of things given sufficient encouragement. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think the main thing is that, you know, to honour the spirit of the original. Most of those songs I have played live um, okay. in, in, in recent years, but in separate shows. So I've done a bit of Can Utility, certainly done Watcher of the Skies. We opened up with that. Um, I have not played, there's, I think there's possibly just one or two. Let me see. I've not played Timetable since 50 years ago. Okay. So I definitely have to learn the changes um, on that. But I always thought it was a very pretty tune. Yeah. A combination of basically upright piano and, and uh, guitar put through a Leslie cabinet or two. Uh -huh. uh, to create that sound and um, it's really you know it's it's stringed instruments percussion instruments that drive it there are no big washes on the whole on yeah. the whole thing um, but it's it's a very pretty tune um, get them out by Friday I have performed in recent years but I I'll have to read your Albert Hall didn't you your Albert Hall I, you I, I, I may have played it there I'm not sure whether it was later on uh, um, no. certainly in Water of the Sky there yeah, yeah. Um, can utility I've done horizons I've done lots of times yeah um stuff is ready is part of the current set um, yeah, because yeah, of seconds yeah. out so there is there will be crossover moments especially when you're talking about live albums yeah. and, uh, and that's what I'm really delivering for the first half of the year shall we say uh, sure. seconds out in the main that's what I'm doing there's a little bit of selling England for shows that were rebooted reconstituted rescheduled so you're a bit um, like bob dylan on this never-ending tour at the moment well you know that that's the funny thing isn't it um life is a never-ending tour really i i think um most of what i was doing in the past 10 or 15 years was was living out of a suitcase and then suddenly of course we were all living at home and um uh, so, you know, on, on, on paper, you, we're going ahead. I have people write, writing on a daily basis saying, you know, are, are you definitely coming to Germany? Will you definitely be playing those shows? Yeah, yeah. And yes, it, it's as definite as if I were the government. Yes, I'd yeah. say that. But, you know, any leader at any time may decide to um, uh, close their plug. borders. Go, Yeah, I mean, so so obviously, yeah, there are risks, but we're going ahead as if as planned so there'll be a lot of shows this year especially with all these things that were sidelined uh, my next question is really um what do you think was the most significant difference for you in approaching foxtrot in comparison to nursery crime all these years ago when i was recording it you mean with genesis yeah. or yeah, um yeah. yeah well you know it's a very funny thing when you look back on, on your young self and you say, you know, all the things I was pre preoccupied with then yeah. uh, are, are no longer my preoccupations. Um, I was thrilled to join Genesis um, in the early days. What was wonderful was to see the growth. And I think by the time you got the Mellotron, never mind the synth, um, yeah. once there was that experience, expansion of sound, expanding the keyboard arsenal, but in many ways, you know, dipping our toe into the water as regards stuff that was orchestral in spirit. Um, I oh. think Genesis were very good at that because I think that harmonically, um, I would argue that the band was the most sophisticated around. Um, oh. And um, yes, of course, classical music, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, um, I was very pleased with with the development. I, I knew that we could go in that direction. I know that they straightened up later, but um, I love the fact that, that, that um, orchestras do it. They teach it in schools. People do yeah. their thesis based on it. Yeah. You know, and all of this from music that was very rarely ever written down other than the idea of here's a chord shape, 
here's 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 the, here's the bass note. Sure. sure. Here are the changes. This is roughly roughly it. and what we were doing instinctively was then of course um turned into something else by other people but you know it it doesn't really matter the main thing is that that the music survives yeah i think you know the best of musical box and the best of foxtrot yeah um comprises quite a lot of really really good stuff sure, um sure it's different when you're in the in the thick of it. You'll you'll yeah. have your personal favourites, and um, yeah. you're in a band. You're going with you know the likes and dislikes of everyone else. And, sure. Um, but um, uh, it's but yeah, you know it's uh, um, and most people would say Supper's Ready was a uh, um, uh, you know quite a step forward really uh, for Genesis. Yeah. Feel that way. I mean, it's still played. Obviously, you still play it live now. It's a it's a fan yes. favourite. Um, mm. But also, I, I read somewhere that um, uh, that Foxtrot really was the beginning of the, a more theatrical approach to presenting yes. music. How did you feel about that at the time? Well, um, with Supper's Ready, I, I, I wanted to sort of um, <clears throat> initiate something that was long form with mm -hmm. the band. Um, I had no idea how to do it. I could contribute, yeah. you know section here and there but um um so having gotten my way with getting a light show getting a mellotron later on a yeah. synthesizer um guitar was really the synth that we didn't possess early on you know using yeah. very speed and all of that what i had no idea about was you know my ideas of the presentation were to to make it um I guess a, a, a tad more multimedia. Yeah. Um, I had no idea that, that Pete had intended to um, um, initiate all, all the um, uh, theatrical stuff. So that was really you know, part of his his show. That was his take on it. So did you feel it um, distracted from the music at all, or did you feel it embellished it? No, I I, I think that. Uh, whatever people say these days you know, it's very easy to be dismissive that was the moment when we started to get our pictures on the front page of okay. all important ma magazines at, at, at that time so um without that i think that genesis would have been an also run so uh -huh. i'm sad to say that the quality of music alone doesn't seem to sell um in the same quantities that the idea of of um the theatrical extravagance and the sexual ambivalence of yeah, all those yeah. things that, that a visually orientated uh, performer will yeah. bring to the pot. Okay, okay, it's interesting. We, we touched upon Supper's Ready. Uh, how much of Supper's yes. Ready was thrashed out before you went into the studio? And yes. were all these dancing girls overhead while you were doing it a distraction? The dancing girls, we never ever saw them. We just heard them, but, you know, oh. they were they made a you know a considerable din upstairs yeah, sure. because there was no soundproofing so you can imagine you've got maybe 20 20 young kids all going clump, 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 yeah, yeah, these yeah. first steps of learning to tap dance and sure. um it was um it was humorous and it provided those sort of light-hearted moments that were so important because things could get very uh, intense with the band mm -hmm. um yeah yeah that was great uh, to, to raise a smile <laughs> we needed that yeah was the uh, supper's ready a lot of it thrashed out before you went into the studio um yeah basically essentially the whole thing was written before we went into the studio um uh in those days there were a minimum of overdubs in other words we were thinking in terms of yeah. you know everything we we do we're designing so that we can play it live potentially we can play it live yeah, yeah, um, and um, and it was hugely um, ambitious. Um, I remember for once, Peter Gabriel and I. It was a move within the band to just do it without all the special effects and without all the stuff. And I and I said, look, it isn't going to work unless we've got everything going for it. You know, to hold their attention, hold yeah, yeah. the audience's attention for that yeah. amount of time 
yes, you do need all the bells and whistles. You need the train noises. You need the children's voices. So mm -hmm. we were um, dependent on our sound mixer, Richard McPhail at the time, switching those things in on a cassette, just queued up on a cassette. So, right. you know, how precise was that? No. Um, so it's but, a, effectively a performance in that track. Well, yes, I, I think that, that, that the special effects were integral to it because wow. it had to be full of surprises. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is no longer full of surprises. And when, uh, when the singer goes, a flower, the audience are normally there several beats ahead because yeah. they know that moment. But the surprise yeah. that was part and parcel of it, uh, to come out of something very quiet yeah. and then come in with something which was um, almost, almost burlesque, um, I think that, that that it was particularly strong. Willow Farm was was particularly strong. Whether it needed the flower mask, I don't know. It took mm -hmm. it into panto at right, that point. Right. Um, a lot of my subscribers have asked um, how much of Shadow of the Hierophant was thrashed out during these uh, these sessions. Um, well, that's interesting. Um, um, basically, the end section in its embryo form was yeah. thrashed out during the, the Foxtrot sessions. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't go on the album, yeah. which I was very disappointed about because I knew it was very strong. And as I performed it many times in front of audiences who've loved it, um, I decided that by the time I'd recorded it, maybe three years later on, on first solo outing, um, I'd make it a kind of crescendo. We'd mm -hmm. start very quietly and then it would, it would build. Of course, just one could always build it more slowly and quietly and all the rest, you yeah. know, and go full Ravel's Bolero. But knowing that audiences' attention span has to be served, you know, there's only just a certain amount of glockenspiel that people will, <laughs> will take and then sure. the cat crawls are going to start. But yeah. The slow build of, of, of that as a sort of processional piece. Yeah. Um, and it's also provided um, a springboard in recent years for um, our drummers to go um, and take it to the next level by, by sailing across it. So I, 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 I encourage that. Um, we've tried it with orchestra. We've done it many different ways, but it, it does thunder. Yeah, and Amanda Lehman is, is absolutely wonderful on that track as well. When it's She's brilliant live. on it live. Yeah, that 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 works very very well. And yeah. um, we do the full length when she's available for shows. Um, sure. Otherwise, we tend to do the second half. Sometimes I do it from the tapping guitar bit onwards. Um, right. And that, in a way, I, I I didn't think it was I didn't think it was remotely revolutionary at the time, but I I realised with hindsight that that was very influential. Okay, uh, okay. So I'm so I'm proud of that, and uh, I I tend to include it now rather than sure. I might be thinking a few years ago. Well, that's a bit indulgent, isn't it? Everyone waits yeah. while I do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but now no, I, I've revised my opinion about that, as you do with certain sure. things like musical box. I used to think it, it meandered too much, but actually oh, wonderful, wonderful live that one. Yeah, but 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 actually it it doesn't. With seconds out, we have truncated it because it's a very long show, ninety minutes. Yeah. We had to just go for the end. The, the band were flagging, yeah, yeah, as yeah. audiences were. If you take them through the whole, the whole shebang, so yeah. um, I, I had to um, face the black spot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, oh, it's yeah. time to rein this in a bit. So, to some extent, seconds out is 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 highlights. Okay, okay. Um... How hard did you have to fight to get Horizons uh, included on this album? Um, well, funnily enough, I didn't at all. I just played it to the guys once in, in um, rehearsal, fully expecting them to say, um, uh, well, you, you know, you're playing that on your own. It's not really a group piece. Sounds nice, Steve, but, you know, yeah. thank you. Uh, uh, but actually... It wasn't. It, it produced. Um, it produced a result. And funnily enough, um, I was in Cafe Nero yesterday, and they have it. They have that original recording played in the mornings. Right. Um, at the Cafe Nero's, which are all over London. I don't know if they're all over the country. And mm -hmm. um, 
and it was quite it was quite funny my wife and i were in there you know and um it, it it's it's quite strange when you hear something that you did you know, that long ago mm-hmm. but it but you know this little tiny piece seems to have um in its own way sprouted wings yeah. um yeah. and i know a lot of people try and cut their teeth on playing um something in a classical style yeah um and try and get their fingers around the changes it's not an easy piece even even no. now to play. I'm trying um, to learn uh, classical guitar myself. I haven't picked it up for a while, but I'm, I'm struggling with uh, Mason Williams' classical gas at the moment. That's yeah, like, well, like that's that. right. <laughs> you know, um, uh, it's a very good piece. Classical gas is a very good piece, and it will engage um, guitarists, I think, for many years to come. Sure, sure. Um, I have one more question for you. Um, we can call it a day then. Is uh, it, it seems to me you went through quite a few producers uh, for the uh, Foxtrot album. What made yeah. you? What made you finally arrive at uh, David Hitchcock? Um, we had Bob Potter first of all. Yeah. Um, and um, I think there was a bit of a, a sort of clash. Um, Genesis, you know, most of those guys had, had, had grown up in a, in a very sort of pressured, cloistered, yeah, upper echelon private school and. And all the rest, and um, I think he, this guy Bob, was much more thinking about street credibility. And um, um, I, funny enough, I recorded Horizons with him one okay. night. I think he said to me that was the only thing he liked because he found everyone else, um, whatever it was, you know, uh, there, yeah. there was a. Um, I guess they were all raised differently or something. And, yeah, um, sure. and I, I, it, it took me four takes to get it in one. There, were, there weren't any overdubs on it. Um, but but um, he just said, I can't work with these guys. I mean, I think that he was very inexperienced as a producer. Yeah. Dave Hitchcock was um, um, more passive, lovely guy, um, <laughs> befriended him. Yeah. And um, we got him very well. We were... We were out to clubs every night and, and, and everything, but yeah. um, but basically, um, you know, um, uh, the engineer Dave was was um, yeah, or rather John was um, um, taking more of a hands-on approach. You know, th- that that was the way of the future. Really, it was the guys oh. who could twiddle oh. the knobs, as it as it is now, of course. With, yes, yeah, of course. Um, um, you know, that worked out very well. He was, you know, we we'd recorded part of Supper's Ready, yeah, and um, and because of the debacle, really, uh, with Bob Potter, um, I know the band. We were worried that perhaps the first part of Supper's Ready, the the uh, the twelve string stuff that supports, oh. you know, the first, yeah, how long is it? About four minutes, perhaps even. Yeah, uh, yeah. And um, um, he listened to it. And said, "I don't get a bad vibe off this. We we can work with this." And he was yeah. the one who said, "Yes." So we needed that level of sanction, and um, and uh, and there we 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 headed forth with him and and did several albums with him, of course. 